Welcome, in front of me is an Asus ROG Phone 5S and today I will show you how to go through the setup process of this phone. Now when you put it up for the first time you should be presented with the obnoxiously loud sound and after that you should see the welcoming screen with a neat animation. So from here we're gonna to select our desired language from the list and then we can select let's go which brings us to internet connection. We have internet connection via mobile network or Wi-Fi. So you can choose whichever one you want. Obviously you can skip them if you don't want to connect to anything, though that will result in you not having any kind of option to log into your Google account throughout the setup process. And additionally, date and time won't be set automatically. Now, I should also mention that both of those things can be changed later on once you connect to Wi-Fi after the setup has been completed. So I'll be skipping them. What brings us next to user license agreement. Uh, those words always ring so nicely because nothing greets me warmer to my brand new device than agreeing to some privacy policies and just having some legal documents that I need to agree to after spending a thousand bucks on the phone. Obviously you need to have that checked on, otherwise you can't actually finish up the setup so you can't use your device. Uh, now your privacy rights. Um, considering it's Google, um, that doesn't really say much. So we can select that we're uh, above the age of 16 or not. Uh, let's pretend that I am not above the age of 16. I don't think it really matters much. The only difference by selecting that you are, it is some more legal documents, who would have known? Um, so from there, you will be created with the Google services. We have things like use location, allow scanning, and send user and diagnostic data, all neatly packaged uh, phrases uh, for some some of them not really neat uh, features. So location is just a simple GPS tracking uh, that allows apps to basically know your location. Now, in certain cases that might be useful like Google Maps, but in certain cases it might not like fitness smart bands uh, or home appliances. Next we have allow scanning. Allows the device to look for oh, basically signals like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And then send user and diagnostic data. Now this one basically allows Google to spy on you. No thanks. Now obviously it's a little bit more uh, worded in a different way that doesn't really sound so creepy but at the end of the day it's I'm pretty sure basically the same thing. Now on the next page we have an uh, option to set up some kind of screen lock. So it allows us to set up a face recognition, fingerprint, pin pattern or password. Now if you're planning to use any of the two first ones, or both of them, you are always required to set up a physical way of unlocking the device, that the pin pattern or password. That is so if something happens to your finger or your face, uh, you still have a way to access your phone. Uh, so for this I'm just going to set up a pattern right here. That's what I'm going to choose. Let's draw the pattern, continue, redraw it, confirm and now it's set. Notifications. When your device is locked, uh, uh, how do you want notifications to show? So choose if you want to see notifications, just some kind of pop-up from a specific app or nothing at all when the device is on its lock screen. That will basically prevent people from snooping on your phone uh, when, I don't know, you leave it somewhere where you can sometimes see content of the notification on the lock screen. This will allow you to basically completely remove it. So let's say and show notifications at all. Protect your phone. Uh, your screen lock has been set up successfully. Well, damn hope so. Attention. Um, okay, so this is just a pop-up for the uh, for this little things that we have right here. So Type-C charging and the fan. Uh, though I don't have a fan, but Type-C port is for charging, so that's what we can use it for. Uh, set up air triggers. So you can do that if you want to right now, or you can disregard it and come back to it later. It's just a setup of these uh, touch sensitive uh, buttons right here for gaming. So when you go through it, it just asks you, as you can see, there we go. Obviously this is designed to be more held like this and squeezed like so. So you can set up and like how hard you want to squeeze the device before it activates. 
oops, I just left the device. So I'm just gonna keep it like so. Good enough. Now air triggers set up complete. Well, that was simple. Now there's a second one, but it looks like it just sets up some kind of shortcut for the squeeze. Uh, register your Asus product. Now, I believe this is for like warranties and stuff like that, but I might be completely wrong. As you can see, it does give us a serial number right here. Um, we can also sign in with Google if you want to do that, but obviously I am not connected to network, so I shouldn't be able to sign into any of these. So I assume if I would try to, it would back me out to the Wi-Fi connection page. I'm just gonna skip. Uh, Asus data transfer. So this allows you just to transfer over all the data from your old device to this one. Uh, now, I believe there's probably going to be several ways of doing this. I have not tried it, uh, but usually majority of the phones have two ways, either through a cable or through a uh, created hotspot that the phone creates itself. And usually it requires you to download their specific proprietary app uh, on your old device and then uh, that old device will connect to this one and start the transfer, which you do get to pick what you want to transfer over. So I'm going to skip this. And lastly, we have the style of our home screen. So obviously one is more gamery, the default one, and then we have the classic, uh, which is the most more of a, like a typical Google uh, OS device, which is what I'm going to be picking. And lastly, actually, this is the last part, I believe. Uh, we have a uh, choice between dark or light mode. Choose whichever one you want. Uh, additionally, uh, this is a little bit limited because it's a either or option. If you go through the settings, I'm pretty sure you can set up uh, as a schedule dark mode. So it will turn on during nighttime and during the daytime you'll have a light mode, which might be a better option overall. -y. And once the setup is completed, it automatically greets you with this kind of thing. This is specifically designed for their box. When you open up the box, you have these like, uh, mm, kind of like a comic looking uh, box where you know, we're talking about the opening one up that just kind of like the box that opens up. Um, it has like a, almost uh, slides from like a comic book and you can start scanning those with a camera and it will start doing like a, AR pass through where you can see on the phone uh, some kind of like animations behind it when you're looking at those slides using the phone. So I'm just gonna kind of close that because it does not actually interest me. And as you can see, there is our home screen. And that is how you would go through the setup of this phone. So if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.